Okay, let's do this. Recording the second time because the phone I'm recording on right now couldn't handle the recording for over 15 minutes for some reason. My name is George. Today, I finally want to talk about the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K that I've been using for over a year for filming wildlife, mainly animals. I have been using this camera with only two lenses. Hopefully I'm not gonna get eaten by all the mosquitoes around here. I'm not the most professional filmmaker, so if I do make any mistakes, you're very welcome to point it out in the comments. I'll first go through all the things that make this camera perfect for wildlife filmmaking, and then the things that are not so good for wildlife filmmaking, or for filmmaking in general, I think. The best thing probably is that this camera has a micro four thirds sensor. That means that any lens that you attach to this camera is gonna be equivalent to its double. If I attach a 100 millimeter lens, it's gonna act like a 200 millimeter lens, so it zooms in even further. That's what you want in wildlife filmmaking, right? So if I had a 300 mil lens, it would be equivalent to this monstrous Canon 600 millimeter lens that you see the most professional wildlife photographers having. The second point is 4K. It's in the name of the camera, and I can never go back to 1080p, I believe, because the image quality that's the third point the image quality it's i love that it's soft and has sharp edges that's what i want my footage to look like so to me it's perfect then this camera has no limit to how much it can be recording i've worked with some uh, sony cameras for example and after 24 minutes of recording they shut down or they overheat and they cannot handle it this camera has special fans not to overheat located right on the top and i can record as much as the battery permits or the space permits on an external drive for example then the screen size if i meet up with wildlife photographers and uh, they look at my camera and they're like wow that is incredible and i agree the memory options you have three memory options an external drive like this uh, samsung ssd then you have a standard sd card over here and a third one that i forgot the name of but then some amazing features that I don't know why I've, I haven't taken advantage of earlier, but focus assist and false color. Uh, so I can see that the subject or the eye of the subject, for example, is focused. And then false color, which helps me set out the highlights and the shadows so the image is not over or underexposed. With these two features, I always have the perfect raw file ready to be edited. Then low light performance. This camera performs very well. I mean, you cannot go out in complete darkness and film stuff, but Blackmagic is very proud of it. I've used it in the evenings to film beavers, for example. DaVinci Studio, or DaVinci Resolve, the full version of it, comes in the box with the camera, just like on a tiny memory card, and it has made my production better, like, tenfold. The size of the camera. Okay, it is a pocket camera, but as soon as you start attaching stuff onto it, it doesn't work, it doesn't fit into a pocket, and you have to have very large pockets. The price, much cheaper than the cameras that have the same features. Now, a thing that I love so much is that Blackmagic has made a separate button that says high frame rate, so you can easily switch frame rates by just tapping one button. On other cameras, you have to set it up separately as function buttons, which Blackmagic cameras have too. The user interface, it's very easy to navigate through the settings of the camera, having just switched it on for the first time. I didn't need any instructions. I probably should read the instructions and it's on my to-do list, but I didn't need to. I didn't need to read the instructions to understand anything on this camera. Everything is so intuitive. The number of micro four thirds lenses that you can attach and I mean buy and attach, there are a lot of them. And if you have a converter, of course you can attach other lenses, but I've seen so many micro four thirds lenses that I wouldn't even need a converter for. Canon lenses, for example. And probably the last point is that it's easy and fast to set up the camera before filming. So I switch on the camera and it takes me maybe four seconds to set up all my settings. Maybe not the focus, but I'll talk about it later. Now the bad things. And the worst thing for this camera as for a wildlife filmmaking camera is that it does not have follow focus. Not sure if film cameras are supposed to have follow focus, but um, it would be very useful and I know that a lot of photography experts they use it to film birds in flight and they get very sharp images but if you have to film an animal approaching you or moving away from you with this camera you have to do it manually 
on the lens, which causes camera shake, of course. This camera does have autofocus, but when you click on the autofocus button, everything goes blurry, so you can't do it while you're filming, obviously. And then it tries to focus in on the subject again, and nine out of 10 times, it doesn't work. Okay, the next worst thing. When you're filming a time-lapse, then you switch off the camera, then you switch it on. The settings are still set to the time-lapse mode, and uh, you're not warned about it. So I've forgotten about the fact that I've been filming in time lapse before. I've gone out to do some gigs. I've messed up big time because I come back home, I look at the footage and it's all a time lapse. You get no warning by the camera that you're doing a time lapse. The batteries are expensive. LP6, no surprise to you probably, but the original batteries that are the only batteries you should be getting don't get the cheap ones they hold up to 15 20 seconds of recording then they switch off if i'm lucky sometimes they switch off earlier and when the battery dies when you're out of power the camera switches off obviously but you get no warning by the camera you plug the footage into the computer and the file is corrupt so there is no way you can recover it okay well it started raining so i had to run inside and wait for the rain to stop so now i'm back here so obviously you'd want to conserve the energy on the camera on the battery uh, so you would switch your uh, camera off and when you switch it back on it takes about three seconds i would say for the camera to turn on and uh, to be ready to film and then you would need another like four seconds to set the camera up so quite a long time if you only have a few seconds to shoot this camera doesn't have the option to be powered by an external power bank even though that will solve most of my battery problems now the microphones there are two internal mics they record decent audio but you need to spend some time in post to fix it because there is humming and hissing in the background you wouldn't want that That's why I'm using, that's a woodpecker, great spotted woodpecker. The camera has two audio inputs, a mini XLR and standard 3.5mm jack. The audio gain through the 3.5mm jack is very low. So right now you are hearing me through the standard iPhone XR microphone without any external mics. Let's see how the camera sounds. Also, not a good vlogging camera. Can't set up the focus. So right now you're listening to me recording on the internal mics of the camera, the two sitting on either side of the lens. And now you're listening to me talk to the external mic, the Rode Video Micro. As you can hear, if you can even hear me, it's very very quiet probably what i'm gonna do is have a separate way of recording the audio through maybe a recorder and attach a microphone to it also the camera has no internal image stabilization compared to the gh5 for example yeah it would be very useful to have some form of stabilization here because when filming handheld and this camera is made for pretty much handheld filmmaking it does look like tiny camera to film with your hands. Okay, and the last point is that it is a video camera. It's not too bad that you can take photos with it, but sometimes I do wish I could take a decent photo with this thing. It can take DNGs with this little uh, photo button here. They do turn out decent, but you have to set out the settings very carefully because if you're doing it handheld again, there is no stabilization and it gets a bit blurred quite often. So overall, I have 15 pros and 10 cons. That's a raven. I do recommend this camera. I have not worked with too many cameras. I have tried to work with the GH5. It's, I like it. Uh, worked with Sony cameras, Canon cameras. So far, I love this the most. Quite subjective. I have produced videos filmed entirely on the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. You can watch it up here and I'm also gonna be linking it in the description and at the end of this video you can watch a whole wildlife show reel filmed on this camera. And to finish off the video, there are some things that aren't good or bad about the camera, just things worth knowing. Perhaps it is a good idea to get a cage for the camera to attach a bunch of different things. 
uh, to it and for extra protection because it is a perfect camera but it doesn't seem too sturdy i mean i wouldn't want to drop a red camera either uh, they're not made to be dropped but when out in the wild filming stuff situations happen if not a cage then maybe get a case or a specific compartment in the camera bag so when the camera is shaken and stuff for a little bit of extra protection when walking around with the camera handheld make sure not to hit any branches or rocks with edges of the camera that are sticking out like the uh, cable over here because these inputs over here they aren't too sturdy either and you don't want to mess around with the cable i messed that up when i hit a tree while i was walking around the forest i don't believe that you need an external monitor with this camera wildlife filmmaking is a way of creating films by adapting to the environment around you and this screen is perfect for these situations i believe there is an app that lets you control the camera it can help you tweak the settings and set the focus on the camera. You cannot see the screen on the camera, so uh, I, can, I cannot use the camera for vlogging. I, I didn't get this camera for vlogging, but it would be nice to be able to somehow see what I'm looking at if I'm in focus and if the lights are set out correctly. If you're switching from a non-professional camera or an iPhone, you may need to know that all of the footage that comes out of this camera is raw, so it needs to be color graded. Also, you cannot delete separate videos on the camera, so all of the editing of the storage happens on the computer. Make sure that you're filming on a tripod with some lenses because the focus will not stay in one place. I'm gonna run back inside before it starts raining again. Make sure to watch the video with the wildlife show reel uh, on the birds and other wildlife of central Russia filmed exclusively, exclusively, exclusively on this camera.